Wednesday, April 19th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Big day today for the Bank of England. They're losing control of inflation. You should not be surprised. I've been telling you why uh, they would. And they've even intervened in the uh, foreign exchange market. Yes, that is speculation, but I'm going to try to prove to you that they did. Before I start, though, I want to talk about the definition of inflation. And why is that? Well, because the government and the Bank of England, the, even the mainstream uh, media, which we know, of course, is bought and paid for, uh, they do everything they're told. Uh, the City of London economists as well, uh, they're blaming, it looks like they're blaming food prices for inflation. And that's totally ridiculous. So as you can see here in the Telegraph, they're focusing on food, even though you're going to see why this is totally bogus. They're saying inflation remains above 10% as food prices soar. That's the Telegraph Guardian, which is on, on, on the other side of a political spectrum, uh, supposedly says UK inf inflation drops to 10.1 in March, but food inflation soars to 45 year high. Well, there's no such thing as food inflation, the Guardian. Well, even the FT, <laughs> and that's not surprising at all, seeing that uh, the FT is the uber globalist organization and they want to keep you poor they don't want you to protect your savings they say uk inflation remain remains high remains in double digits as food prices stay high so uh, blame food prices don't blame the bank of england and the government for running deficits for the bank of england not uh keeping a tight monetary policy they're not they haven't done much that much of QT, I've checked uh, the data, and their base rate is four and a quarter when RPI is still running at 13 and a half, CPI above 10%. Maybe they took, they should look at uh, the Central Bank of Mexico and Brazil who actually have positive rates. They've raised rates above their rate of inflation. So, uh, I always like to go back to this, my uh, Merriam-Webster pocketbook dictionary from the early 70s. Uh, back then, they hadn't uh, corrupted the definition of inflation. <laughs> I think uh, if you came out as a respected uh, publication and said that in, uh, food prices caused inflation, they would laugh at you. It says... Um, an abnormal increase in the volume of money and credit resulting in a substantial and continuing rise in the general price level. Yes, the Bank of England and the government are trying to keep the housing bubble going, right? Uh, they, they don't want uh, that to collapse because it would be a total disaster uh, for the economy, for the government, uh, this economy, unfortunately, is heavily dependent on housing, on borrowing. If people's house prices were to collapse 20, 30 percent in nominal terms, spending would collapse as well. The economy would go into recession. Uh, yes, we might have to call the IMF to bail out the HM Treasury. So that's what inflation is. Uh, when you see the rising prices, it's the consequence of inflation. And who creates the inflation? Well, uh, let's go to Felix Zomere, uh, who I've spoken many times about. Uh, he was probably the most respected, arguably the most respected uh, banker of the early 1900s, maybe the first half of the 20th century. He was also known as the Raven of Zurich, and I recommend uh, his book, The Raven of Zurich. I'll put a free PDF below in the description so you can read it. So this is what he said. The state alone is responsible for inflation. Inflation without government or indeed against government is impossible. I spoke about this a few days ago. I keep reiterating this. And someone asked, what, what does he mean the the state alone is re responsible for inflation. 
Well, because you and I can't inflate, we and you and I can't create currency out of thin air and lend it out at interest. That's what the government can do, and the Bank of England and their private uh, private banks that really run run the show with them, the the Barclays, the HSBCs, the NatWest, right? That, that's what that comment means. It's not food prices causing inflation. Inflation, as you see, it is the uh, abnormal uh, increase in the volume of money and credit or currency and credit, if you want to call it. And what does that do? Well, when you increase the, the volume of something and you, uh, you keep the economy the same, like the productive capacity economy the same, the value of that currency goes down. <laughs> and that's what inflation is. Uh, prices are not rising, really. Well, they are in terms of the currency, but uh, it's the currency that's losing value. But what we've got here is uh, the general price level rising as per the CPI and the RPI. And why is that? Well, because the Bank of England and the government haven't done enough monetarily and fiscally to rein in the currency and credit creation. So the Bank of England has kept rates too low uh, to halt this uh, abnormal increase in the volume of currency and credit. And uh, HM Treasury or, <laughs> or the government has kept spending too much and borrowing too much. And that's why there's too much currency and that's why it's losing value. It's not food prices. So now let's go to what the Bank of England has done and what the data were and why I said that uh, they've intervened. Well, <laughs> As I said, I, I, I couldn't call them and, you know, and you can call the Bank of England, uh, call the press office and ask, ask a question. Uh, but uh, they probably wouldn't answer this. You see, uh, the UK created something called the Exchange Equalization Account, EEA. It's the account that holds the UK's reserves of gold, foreign currencies and international monetary fund special drawing rights. The EEA was established in 1932 to provide a fund which could be used for checking undue fluctuations in the exchange value of sterling. So what's undue fluctuations? Well, <laughs> basically it's saying, uh, yeah, we, we need to try to manipulate uh, the, the rate because we don't like what the market is telling us. So this is what they do with this fund. I don't know how much there is in this fund, but I do know that the Bank of England, aside from the 300 tons that this country has of gold, they, they keep another 5,000 tons, as you can see here, for other, uh, other countries. <laughs> I, I don't understand why other countries would keep their gold reserves with the Bank of England, but they do. And this is all about the LBMA. This gold is leased out by the Bank of England, even uh, uh, gold from other countries, they lease it out. And what the bullion banks do, uh, they <laughs> it's like when you lease a stock and sell it short, they go and sell sell the, the gold short, paper gold short in the market. And, and uh, that's what the Bank of England does. And if you remember well, and I do because I used to work in the market, and I know that these uh, inflation data, CPI and RPI, used to come out at 9.30, but ever since 2020 and the start of the lockdowns and all that uh, palava, they changed the, the time to seven o'clock. And why do they do that? Well, because it's easier to manipulate a price, <laughs> the market at seven o'clock. Most people are still not even up or are just getting ready to go to the office or work from home. So it's easier to manipulate a market. And I think they've done that because why why would sterling go up and why would the gold price in sterling also go down uh, when we can see that the Bank of England is losing control of inflation? It's going to lose control of the gilt market again. I think that's the next step. And we could see another crisis, sterling crisis. Don't be fooled by the, the short term reaction of sterling and of the price of gold. So 
let's have a look at the data, the actual data. While the CPI was expected, and they've been expecting CPI to drop below 10% for a few months now, and it doesn't seem to, to do so. So the previous one was 10.4%. It was expected to drop to 9.8%. That's the annual growth of consumer price index. And it came out at... Uh, 10.1. Of course, this is not inflation, but it is the consequence of inflation. What it's telling us is that there's still too much currency and credit out there. And the problem is that our economy, uh, not just in the UK, but in the US as well, depends on credit and spending. So they've got a really difficult situation here. Either they let rip the uh, price rises or what they call inflation, or they rein in the money supply, the currency supply, like uh, they did in the early 80s and bring uh, price rises under control. But I don't think they're going to do it. They don't want to uh, destroy, uh, collapse the real estate market. That would be disastrous for tax receipts. That would be disastrous for the economy. So let's keep going. Interesting that the month-on-month -month rate rose by 0.8. It was expected to only rise by 0.5. And the important one as well, which used to be uh, what people looked at in terms of uh, inflation uh, prior to 1997. Uh, and it's amazing how they forget about it because it's still really high. The RPI, that was expected to drop from 13.8 to 13.3. And it's still at 13.5. So that's the true, uh, I think that's a much better, there's no such thing as the true rate of price growth. Everyone spends different things. Everyone buys different things. Uh, the average household uh, spends a lot more on food and energy than someone, <laughs> so than a multimillionaire or billionaire, of course. But it is the best reflection of the average household's cost of living, and that's still running at 13.5%. The Bank of England, uh, what would I be doing if I was the Bank of England and I was independent? Well, I would be meeting today and raising rates straight to 15%, emergency meeting. Of course, they're not going to do that. So you're going to hear, oh, the Bank of England is going to raise rates a bit more aggressively for a bit longer, but they're going to keep dragging their feet. And, and that's why I'm not going to get rid of my gold and silver, that's for sure. I'm going to try to actually stack some more in the next few days if they keep uh, manipulating it. <laughs> but even then, it's going to be hard to get a very good price. These spot prices are not a good reflection of the real physical market. So I'll just show you here before we, we check the markets. Uh, the kind of uh, action that we just saw around seven o'clock when this number came out, you can see they smashed the gold price to below 1990. And then if you look at the other side of the coin, uh, you know, the, the British pound rate versus the dollar. In the, initially, they spiked it up <laughs> uh, after the number came out and then it dropped like it should because a currency that is... Uh, crappy <laughs> and, and where you have negative interest rates where they, they've lost control of uh, the uh, of prices or the inflationary pressures should collapse like it did but then they came in as you can see uh, the exchange equalization account and they've probably bought bought the pound with their dollar reserves and of course they smash gold as well so that's how they do it uh, of course maybe those of you in the UK might want to call the uh, Bank of England. <laughs> uh, I might call them the press office and uh, ask them, oh, I want to uh, speak to someone about the exchange equalization account, whether you used it this morning when the inflation data were published. If enough of us call them, they might be a little bit annoyed with us. So anyway, uh, let's check the markets. Let's check the gilt market today. That would be important because that sets the price for mortgages, uh, loans, credit cards for the government. Uh, that, that's the next shoe to drop, just like it did back last year. I think it will do so again. But anyway, it's 8.23 a.m. London time. 
We've got spot gold at 1995. It's down $10. Uh, high has been uh, 2008 and a half. The low has been 1986, 81. That's the Bank of England low when they smashed it through the bullion banks. Uh, silver is down 17 cents at 25. Uh, high has been 29 and the low 83. The Dow futures is down 78. NASDAQ is down 52 points. And the S&P uh, future is down 11. As I said, sterling, <laughs> yeah, it's up. Uh, their excuse, the thinking uh, in the city and by economists is that, well, as inflation is higher than expected, the Bank of England is going to tighten more and for longer. But the Bank of England is not tightening. <laughs> uh, real rates are still negative. Wake up. But anyway, <laughs> sterling is up uh, a third of a percent at 124.70. Uh, yeah, uh, the euro, euro is unchanged, 109.69. Uh, the dollar uh, is up a third of a percent versus the yen at 134.54. And the dollar is up 0.2 versus the yuan at 689.67. So let's have a look at the ruble. Uh, the ruble uh, dollar is uh, down a third of a percent at 81.50 versus the ruble. To the other currencies here, Aussie dollar is unchanged uh, at 67.25. Uh, dollar, dollar versus the Canadian dollar is unchanged as well, trading right around 134. And the, the Kiwi dollar is unchanged at 62.05. Let's quickly go through the commodities market. Uh, we've got uh, platinum down $12, trading around $1,071. Uh, WTI crude is down half a percent at $80.45. Brent is down half a percent at $84.07. High grade copper, uh, that's down uh, three quarters of a percent at $406.42. So let's first look here at the uh, UK gilt market or the government bond market for the UK. The uh, two-year yield is at 382. It's up 13 basis points, which is not good. A lot of the mortgages are set on the back of the uh, two-year swap rate, which is a derivative of the uh, uh, two-year gilt yield. We've got the 10-year up 10 basis points at 385 and the 30 year up 10 basis points at 420. Uh, we're gonna keep an eye on this. Uh, we are much higher, of course, than we were at the end of 2021, but we've come off in terms of where we were in uh, September, October, when we had the, the, the last uh, guilt and sterling crisis. I could see sterling suffering and guilt, guilt yields rising in the next month or two. Things don't look good. Yes, the Bank of England and the government are not doing enough to bring down inflationary pressures, as we can see through the CPI and RPI data. And don't get fooled into thinking that it's food prices causing inflation. The real culprits are at number 11 Downing Street and at Threadneedle Street. With that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.